This is a clinical case of a 30-year-old man who has had a delayed low testosterone diagnosis secondary to anabolic steroid use. What do we have here? The history of present illness is that this man comes to me in the last week and at 20 years old, he ran a four-month cycle of all orals, Winstrol, Anavar, Dianabol. That's all he did. He did, well, that was quite a cycle, of course. You guys know that. No intermuscular testosterone, no other intermuscular steroids, no other pets, growth hormone, no insulin, nothing. He did it. He was 20. He did it for four months and... He's not a professional athlete. He did it and he abruptly stopped. No post cycle therapy. And he remembers that when he stopped, he doesn't feel that he suffered so much. He just stopped and he doesn't even remember withdrawal. He just stopped and he moved right along and he didn't want to do it anymore and moved on in his life. And he didn't have any toxic effects. So those are three strong oral steroids, everyone knows, Winstrol, Anavar, and Dianabol. He did it for four months straight. And uh, this is a man not in America. And it's interesting that I see the guys in America seem to know more uh, about limitations and dangers of oral steroids. And this has been going on for years versus some other um, men that are outside the country. And it's not disparaging men that are outside America. I don't know. There's just some type of uh, <clears throat> a disconnection where it seems like in other parts of the world, there must be a communication barrier. I don't know where the the information from the, the bro science really kind of understands that you don't run orals uh, that long and um, that you would never want to do this many orals together, certainly for four months. Although people do it, even in America, with other steroids. So when you're young, it seems like the body can take all this stuff, right? So as I said, he discontinued after four months, doesn't remember withdrawal. For years, he's okay, just fine. Now, four years ago, he remembers, comes to America actually, and he's a professional. So he's in school to be a professional for something. And he's working very hard studying and he has actually um, his wife with him. And he's a young man. So now he's about 25 or so, and he has uh, gained weight. So he remembers a significant weight gain of 75 pounds, actually. He's about 200 pounds today, 205. So now he's, he's ballooned up to like 275. And then he has this fatigue and malaise, you know, no sexual stuff yet at that point that he remarks. But he does remember that he doesn't know, was it chicken or the egg? Did, he, did something happen and then he gained all the weight? Was it stress? He's in school. He's a professional trying to get a job working in America. Move forward up until about a year ago, maybe 18 months. He loses the weight, about 75 pounds, maybe more. He's back down to his base weight that I saw him a couple of days at and looking at him. About a year ago, loses the weight and he's waiting. He used a very good coach for that. He's looking at the clock and thinking, when am I going to feel better? When am I going to feel better? And he's down to his weight. I mean, he's thin. He's in good shape now. And then six months ago, so now come fast forward up to about six months ago, sex drive just tanks. Until that point, he had some sex and not details specified. Of course, I always specify the details with the man, but this, this, he's sex drive now tanks six months now six months ago, now coming up to today. So he gets his labs checked in December. So now we're up to, this is January, 2021, today, right? And so about a month ago, six weeks ago, gets his labs checked with me through my service and my consultation service. And he brings it to his doctor. So his total testosterone is significantly low at 190 nanograms per deciliter. And his free testosterone on this, the relative scale is a 3.15 nanograms per deciliter. So he's low, he is very low. Free testosterone is low and that of what would be equivalent for maybe a 70 year old man. Now he doesn't repeat it multiple times. He does it once, goes to his doctor. 
Now, his LH and FSH are completely normal, and his other labs are completely normal. He has no significant past medical history. He is blood pressure is perfect. He's not diabetic, pre-diabetic, cholesterol is perfect. No contribution from his social history. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke cigarettes, doesn't abuse any illicit drugs. He's on no medications at all when he comes to me. Family history is non-contributory. This is the detailed history, guys, that you need to have. And on review of systems from head to toe, it's completely uh, non-contributory toward his story. So what can you do? What's happened? You know, I spent about an hour and a half with each new patient. I love it. Absolutely love it. Do a few of these a day all over the world. Most of the stuff is on Zoom, obviously. And uh, I'm going to continue that. What happened? This is a 20-year-old man. Now he's 30. And a 10-year period, he does one cycle of steroids for four months. And stops it abruptly. No PCT. Not that PCT has any evidence-based support that it, that it works to be a reset button for guys and to help guys recover from steroid use. But of course we can use it because it's ethically correct. And that's a whole nother topic. So what happens? And then initially for years, he's okay. Then he has this weight gain, weight loss, subsequently tanks his uh, sexual function. And that brings him to get his labs checked. The primary care doctor wasn't sure what to do and was going to send him to an expert comes to me. I just saw him. What do you do? What can you reverse? Of course, you could recheck the labs, but his symptoms are consistent that he has low T. Can definitely recheck the labs. Can see an endocrinologist, can see a urologist that's not just a surgeon, but understands this type of andrology and testosteronology. And he has no psychiatric background. He has nothing to reverse, no medicines. What do you do? And he's been off steroids for 10 years. So this is an incredible case. This is quite rare, guys, quite rare. The average guy that comes to me is either blasting and cruising or he's been on steroids, multiple cycles of steroids for many, many years, hopefully not suffering for years off steroids because he's already recovered and he's okay or he's just on testosterone. Hopefully not from himself, but from a caregiver because we know we have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And is this case what this is? I gotta get comments, guys. What do you think? This is unbelievable. A delay of 10 years from one cycle of a very healthy young man who's 20 healthy and he's 30 is completely healthy. No contributions, no medical history, no social contributions, no family, no genetics, nothing. What do you do? What do you do? So uh, we are going to give this man a trial of testosterone. We're going to work with his primary care doctor. We're going to see how he does. Because in my opinion is that this is a significant delay of anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. I've seen cases like this, but this is a quite an amazing case that it's so discreet and there's no other outer issues. There's no PTSD. There's no depression, no other meds, no alcohol abuse, no drugs, no nothing else going on. No other medical issues, no prednisone, none of this, no narcotics. I see this stuff mixed in. So many cases are so complicated. You have to decipher. I have to decipher all these things and I find so many medical issues. That's why I love being trusted by you guys. Very complicated work. A lot of times I say, I don't know, sir. What do we, we spend a lot of time together. I said, I don't know. I mean, this is an incredible case. Your T is significantly low. Your symptoms, he has no, he hasn't had sex in six months or something, four months with his wife. It's really bothering him. No sexual a AM erections. So what's happened with this guy? Do you do a brain MRI? By the way, his prolactin levels were normal and his FSH and LH were normal. We know the data is, uh, is out there now that men that suffer with anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism it is a mainly a secondary form of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism where the gonadotropins are down or normal. They just give up in response to having low gonads, testosterone. Primary is the testicle, secondary tertiary, primary, secondary. That's how that's how that's the nomenclature, guys. So I, I look at it all day long. With endocrinology doctors and urology and other experts in the world, no one's gonna argue. So in this case, is it a failure of the testicles? 
or is it a failure of the, the subject nervous system? We feel the anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism is much more of a secondary failure because when you use, when you use LH and FSH analogs like HCG or HMG, Bravel Overdrill, you stimulate the gonads, they respond because the gonads respond, but they need an extra stimulation. So are they partially resistant, over desensitized and shut down? And in addition to the brain that's just given up too. Very complicated, very complicated. So this is a really cool case, only because the guy was a great guy and he's coping well. He's coping well. He's working a brilliant man, by the way. Brilliant man. You guys, so many brilliant men come into me. And it's amazing that these are brilliant men that that have great jobs and they're professionals, yet they were must, they were uh, or they are um, uh, identifying with muscular physiques and to be very muscular, bodybuilding, powerlifting, and strong men. There's nothing wrong with it, doctors. This, you have to understand this is a new world now. So we're not just stupid muscle dragging yard apes. Don't discriminate and don't hate on us for this. So what do you do with this man? This is going to be my case and I'm going to watch him very closely and see if he responds to a trial of testosterone replacement. And uh, I bet he will. And if he does, I certainly went over every single side effect from head to toe, the hair loss, the acne, the mood changes, hopefully great sex, hopefully it stays, the gynecomastia, the heart and the prostate. I do it 24 seven guys. So, you know, but it has to be man per man. And uh, he has no medical issues and we have to hope he never has uh, concerning medical issues, but he'll get older and he'll get pick up something because we have to watch him. So. This is a great case. Let me get comments on this, guys. Please, let's see what you think. What do you think about this case? And are you, have you had cases like this? And if there are men in the world that have done steroids, even one cycle years ago and you don't feel well, get checked, brother. Get your total and free testosterone checked. Check the LH and FSH. Go to a doctor, do a consult. I'm blowing up the app. So let's, let's get a great discussion for men that are suffering to get picked up and discovered and helped. Ah, I hope this really helps. Thank you so much.